Lord, we welcome you here in this place. Touch our hearts for this message. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you, praise team. You may be seated. If you're visiting with us today, for the first time, we welcome you. And I hope that you feel that we are a church that loves to worship Christ. Amen. We are here to worship Him and give Him the praise that He deserves. He deserves all glory and all honor. And uh, a lot of times we want to make church about about us, about what I need. But what I need is just more of Him. I want to pursue Him. I want to seek after Him. Is that your hearts this morning, that you want more of the Lord? And uh, again, in this message this morning, for this month, we've been preaching on Pentecost. And uh, we're preparing for Pentecost. Not that Pentecost can't happen uh, today, uh, but next week is Pentecost Sunday. And I'm excited to know that, uh, that we may have some extra guests with us because of the baptismal service. In fact, I was told uh, this morning, talking with somebody, that uh, he said, I don't know if they know that there is a Pentecost Sunday. They're going to find out there's a Pentecost Sunday, amen. And you're going to be here, right? Uh, you're going to be on fire for God. You're going to be ready for what God has you. We, we can't work it up. Don't, don't get me wrong. I, I want to be excited because of what he's doing in me, but uh, I can't work up any more than what he does. And I know that he pours out his spirit on people that are hungry for him. Hungry for him. Not just hungry for uh, a manifestation, but hungry for him. But he shows himself. In real ways for us to know. Amen. And I'm excited. So I, I encourage you this week to pray for next week's service that God has his way to move on the hearts of those who may have not experienced the baptism of the Holy Spirit, may not understand uh, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That the Lord give me the, the right message for the hour because we believe that God poured out his spirit in the, in the book of Acts chapter 2. We see that encounter there and, and we see what God did. But that experience did not just stop there, right? How many believe that the book of Acts is true? That the, the power of the Holy Spirit was poured out? And so when we look at his word... And we know that it was true for them today that he wants to empower us still because there's still people who need to be saved. Amen? Amen. Does anybody here know someone who needs Jesus Christ? Yes. How many need strength to witness to them? Yes. Guess what the power of the Holy Spirit does? He empowers us that we may be? Some of you read it. We are empowered that we may be? Witnesses. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. I'm not preaching on that this morning. I want to take us to a message of... Uh, about the Holy Spirit, but the title is Growing in Testimony. Say that with me. Growing in Testimony. Amen. All you have a testimony for, we just sung about it. I, I love that song. I, I, I'm, I'm, you pulled it out just at the right time. That, that song, uh, one goes, the first time I, uh, we led that song, my wife put a test of this, we was in Crawfordsville, and we just heard this song, and we were passing, we did it on a Sunday night, so you have to know me. I, <clears throat> I'm brutal, I was just musicians, I get that word part sometimes, musicians, learn to contest it sometimes, I just do it. We practice it on a Sunday night, and my piano player was like, yeah, we'll work on that, and I'm like, be ready, we may go tonight, he goes, we just pulled it out, I don't know if we can do it, I'm like, if the spirit will move that way, we'll do it, he's like, okay, spirit led that way, we did it, it was the best service we had on a Sunday night for a long time, every musician was in sync with each other, it was just an amazing night, and God moved, and it's not just about the song, but it's about the testimony, when I think about the Lord, see, before we go on, you may just need to take a moment right now, and think about what God has really done for you, and again, I'm going to ask, if you're in this place, please look this direction, Focus needs to be up here, not on me, but about what we're doing. It's a hindrance if I, if I don't have your attention. Think about what the Lord is doing and has done in your life. Think about it for a moment. Does it, does it, does it excite you at all? I mean, when you think of sins, because away from that, took me away from that, so I don't have to Feel the penalty of sin, but I can be in heaven. So we think about that. That's our testimony. You have that testimony. If you've called on Jesus Christ as your Savior, you have been saved. But you need to grow in your testimony. It can't stay there. Is anybody satisfied to stay with that testimony that he saved me? He has more for us than just salvation. 
He wants you to know that he's in your life every day. He wants you to walk with him every day, and he will walk with you if you allow him to. So let's go through this, this scripture this morning, Acts chapter 19. Paul is telling us what is going on here. This is recorded of, of Paul. The question I have to talk is, did you receive? And it happened while Paul was at Corinth that Paul, having passed through the upper region, came to Ephesus and finding some disciples, he said to them, now these are not the disciples, the 12 disciples of Jesus Christ. These are followers of Christ. We talk about being disciples, right? What did Christ call us to do in Matthew chapter 28? Go to all the world, right? And make disciples. So it can't just be contained to the 12. We are all to be disciples. How many have been made a disciple? You need to grow in discipleship. And we need to make other disciples, other followers of Christ. So he ran into some disciples who, who were following Christ. And Paul asked this question, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? So they said to him, we have not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. And he said to them, And to what then were you baptized? So they said, Into John's baptism. And what they were referring to is water baptism. This is what we're going to see next week and experience next week and, and celebrate it next week. Water baptism signifying when someone is, is placed under water and brought back up that they are just showing that they were once dead but now they're alive in Christ. It is a, it's a, an expression of burial, but resurrection. Resurrection of new life in Jesus Christ. And they said, we have been baptized, but we were baptized in Christ, in, in water. And we celebrate that. We have to have an understanding of that. And we've talked about it before, and I'll just lay a quick foundation. We understand that water baptism doesn't save us, right? It's a testimony of being saved. It's a pro proclamation to those uh, around us. I have been changed. I, my old man has been buried. My old man is dead. And now I'm alive in Christ Jesus. I'm a new creation in him. So they said that. They, we, we were buried. This takes me back to Matthew chapter 13. And, and I just want to show you that the spirit is involved in water baptism. The spirit is involved in the, in the process. And we see where Jesus was baptized in, in Matthew chapter 3. It says Jesus came from Galilee to John at Jordan. So we, we talk about the baptism of John. talk about water baptism. This is the baptism they took. So this is the picture where Jesus came to John to be baptized. And, and John tried to prevent him saying, I, I need to be baptized by you. Why are you coming to me? But Jesus answered and he said to him, Permit it to be not so, for thus is fitting for this to fulfill all righteousness that he allowed him. Jesus said it's part of my, it's part of the righteous walk to be baptized. I don't know if you've ever thought about that before, or water baptism. It, it, it also symbolizes a cleansing. What are we supposed to be once we give our heart to Christ? We are to become righteous, right? We are to live righteous. I know how it is. I, when I get dirty, I've been working outside. And, ugh. You've been there before? Honey, come hug me. No, don't touch me. You, you've been there where you, yeah. And, and what do you need? You need to be cleansed, right? And there's something about that refreshing, that, that, that cleansing, that, that washing away everything. You feel better. When you walk in righteousness, you will feel better. When you get the sin and the muck of this world off of you and your eyes are on Jesus Christ and you're not being weighed down every day by the same old things, the same old sins, and you're no longer a slave to those things, but you have been born again, you will feel better about yourself when you walk in righteousness because you've been cleansed, you've been sanctified, and you are able to walk in holiness and in righteousness because of the power and the cleansing blood of Jesus. Verse 16. This is one of those 316 verses. I, I love those verses. And this is one that we looked at. And when he had been baptized, 
Jesus came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were open to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. And it's interesting, that word of alighting, it, 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 it's, a, it's a word that's translated a couple different ways. It can, be, it can mean uh, come, it can mean go, but when it means come in the middle voice that is used here, it's actually referring to two people from different places coming to the same place for the same purpose. The Holy Spirit came and hovered there and presented himself in the form of a dove and a purpose to, to show what God was doing in the life of Jesus as we're supposed to follow him, that he wants us to be baptized to signify Jesus is in our life. And the Holy Spirit, who is, who is the seal of our salvation, right, puts an approval on what Jesus did for us on Calvary. That's what we're doing when we're being baptized. We're showing others we've been changed. And the Holy Spirit is present saying, I'm putting a seal on this, saying that what they're doing is right and true. So I submit to those who are being water baptized, this is... The water doesn't seal you. The Holy Spirit seals you. But you're telling everybody, I've been changed. You can see a difference in me. So you better not see the old me. The old me died back there. It died here at the altar. It died on the cross with Jesus. He took my old man away. I'm different now. I've been changed. Don't let the old me rise up out of be sealed by the Holy Spirit. Think about sealing. My wife and I were blessed this past few days. We had some friends of ours that invited us to come to Chicago for a night. Pay for the room. You don't say no to that. There's a place up in Chicago, Garrett's Popcorn. I don't want to hear an amen. Don't you guys get it? Try to get spiritual that way. <laughs> but it's good popcorn. But guess what? If you leave it in the bag they give you very long, it becomes stale. You may try to eat it just because you don't want to waste it, but it's not as good if it's not fresh, right? So when we get that home, the first thing we do is we get these big Ziploc baggies and we fill it in there because it's got this, this uh, mechanism that you can seal it to keep the freshness, right? What happens if that you seal it halfway and leave half of it open? Air's going to get in. It's still going to go back. But when you completely seal it, it stays fresh. We need to be completely sealed by the baptism of the Holy Ghost, knowing that our salvation is in Him and He wants to keep us. Seal us. He doesn't want the things of the world to get around us again to make us go stale. We can stay fresh in the power of the Spirit. We need a baptism of the Holy Spirit. We need to walk in Him. And then I, you can't leave this verse out when you look at this passage. And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. God the Father was pleased with what Jesus did, and he's pleased with you. When you surrender your life, he wants others to hear the testimony, how you've been changed, and how you've been sealed by the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit's approving what you've done, and he wants not just to be over us, but he wants to be in us. How many believe that the Holy Spirit doesn't want to just hover around us, but he wants to be inside to lead us? To protect your heart, to guide you. Even the, the words that are expressed that you be filled. There's a difference of being filled and poured over. Filling is from the inside. Pouring over is just on the outside. I, I don't want just an outward experience with God. I don't want just a, on the outside where it may look a little. I want something inside knowing that it's real. That I'm not just going through the emotions or the motions of it. That I'm not just doing it to, to get it done, but something within me is charging me to go. Something within me is, is driving me and making me and, and propelling me and, and energizing me and empowering me. It's the power of the Holy Spirit. I like food. 
We need food, right? You can look at a steak dinner all day long. It's not going to give you any energy, right? It's not going to give you any strength. What do you have to do with it? You have to put it in. You have to be filled with something to keep going. In a spiritual journey that we're in, we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit to keep us going. To keep us walking with Him. Back to our main text in Acts chapter 19, verse 4. Paul says this, that John and he baptized with a baptism of repentance. He was clear about that. What John was doing was right. He was, he was leading people to Christ. We understand who John the Baptist was, right? He was the forerunner of Christ. He was one that was telling everyone, there is one who is coming after me that is mightier than me, that he's going to not just baptize you, with water, but he's going to baptize you with fire and the Holy Ghost. He's going to empower you. John was the forerunner to let them know there's one who is greater than I, because John was received well, that he gave the message of repentance, and many repented. They were baptized in water to follow who Christ would be when they, when they found out who he was. He was the forerunner, forerunner for Christ, and when they found Christ, they followed him. But Jesus baptizes us with the Holy Spirit. And so Paul is talking to the disciples who knew about Christ but didn't know about the Holy Ghost. And he began to tell them and he prayed for them. He says, John, indeed, baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying that the people that they should believe on him who would come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. So I want you to notice this phrase at the top. Seeking Christ is seeking the Spirit. <coughs> Say it with me. Seeking Christ is seeking the Spirit. Well, how's that? Well, the Scripture tells us in 1 John 5, 7, For there are three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are... So when you seek the Father, you're seeking the Son, and when you're seeking the Son, you're seeking the Spirit, but Jesus is the one who died for us, and so we need to seek after Him that He may fill us with the promise of the spot of the of the Spirit. But it's all about seeking Christ. I need Christ in my life. Jesus talks about it when He's on Earth. If you see the Father, you see Me. Or if you see Me, you see the Father. Is that right? He represents the. The Father, the Holy Spirit hasn't been poured out. That's why he says that it's important that I go away so another comforter can come. We're all free. We're all one. But we have our roles. And sometimes that may be hard for us to understand how that works out. But I'm following the word. Christ ascended back to heaven. And he poured out the Spirit on the day of Pentecost so that we all might be filled. John tells us in Chapter 14, these are the words of Christ. Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the works. Jesus is even talking about the Father being in him. They can't be separated. And when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you can't just separate that. Where you go, he goes. He may not always be happy where you go, so you better watch where you're going. The Holy Spirit is not luggage. You can't just set it off to the side and set him off to the side and pick him up when you need him. He is with you. He's your comfort. See, sometimes we don't think about these things in the right in the right way. We we, we take religion, religion is different. We are in a relationship. If you're married, you still take off your ring at a at an inconvenient time. Like, no, I don't want everybody to know I'm married. I'm just gonna take my ring off. No, that would be wrong, right? This symbolizes that you're attached. The Holy Spirit is a part of us. We can't just set him to the side when it's not convenient for us to the old ones. He's the reminder of us. And don't say that. Don't act like that. Don't think like that. There's better things for you because I've given you the fruit of myself. 
fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, hope, long-suffering, gentleness, kindness, meekness, gentleness. He gives us himself. I'm not going to preach on the fruit of the Spirit, but it's not the fruits of the Spirit. You can't pick and choose what you want. You receive all. Let the Holy Spirit control my light. Let my light be as Jesus Christ is shining through me as He is. Not what I want. Verse 11, believe me that I am in the Father, the Father is in me, or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. And you jump down to verse 17, he talks about the Spirit in that same passage. Jesus says, the Spirit of truth, referring to the Holy Spirit, whom the world cannot receive. Now he's not talking about the church, he's talking about the world. The church can receive the Holy Spirit. Yes, we're in the world, but we're not of the world, right? You've been transformed. You, you were a part of this world before, but you have been taken out in a sense that you, you're no longer a citizen of this world, but you're a citizen of heaven above. You may not dwell there yet, but you're on your way. Know him. But you will know him 